Hello, and welcome to Comic Watch Episode 2. Uh, 2 because there's two of us, and also because it's our second one. I am Scott, I'm here with Reed Strong. My name's Reed Strong, and I always have at least one or two strong reads. Always. Uh, so you'll notice Erin is not with us, she is at Dallas Comic Con. Um, I'm like 90% sure I'm right about that. I know that she has at Acon. I think you're right. Yeah. Pretty sure it's Dallas Comic Con. Um, which, uh, good for good for Texas for like having a Comic Con still, you know? Yeah, they... Yeah, during all of this. You will, you, we will not be stopped from enjoying our comics and getting them signed. Very much, as long as they don't get wet. Uh, yeah, so she'll be back next week to tell us all about her exciting adventures at the con um, and books that she probably spent too much money on if she's anything like the two of us. I was at Rose City last weekend. I somehow managed to only spend $40, and oh man, this, this is relevant. Uh, uh -oh. Scott, guess what I got eight issues of we got for a dollar each. Is that it, extreme justice? It's extreme justice. It's extreme justice. It's so extreme. For the dollar an issue is exactly how much I'm willing to spend on that. You know, that series is why I haven't read Extreme X Men. Is and it's ridiculous because Extreme X Men is apparently pretty good and nothing. I've heard like really good justice. things. Yeah, I've heard great things. It's not like, hey, look at how extreme we are. It's just you know they needed. Yeah, it was more of like actually it was like early 2000s extreme rather than Rob Liefeld's nipples extreme. Exactly, exactly. Which is just called X Force as we know. Yeah. As we do. Um, so, uh, let us, without further ado, get into the thing. We talk about uh, new comics that came out this past week on this show. We we'll talk about the nine in an episode. So, today, instead of having three each, we have four each, plus this first one, which which we just have to deal with. It's done, Scott. Technically, except still probably not, given the way how it ends. No spoilers yet. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just throw the spoiler tag up here right now, because this is the end of Secret Empire. This is the Omega issue, so the end already happened. We talked about it last week, kind of. Uh, and then now here's the Omega issue, which is like the epilogue. So because we're at the end of a big storyline, the spoiler tag is up there, and we're going to... This was a hard issue. It was... Nick Spencer justifying the entire event to the audience who read it for about 30 pages and also saying, ha ha, fuck you, Hydra Cap's still around. Yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about your first point. You said to the audience that only read 30 pages, because, yeah, it felt like it was only addressing the beginning and end of Secret Empire. Yeah. It, like, ignored all the stuff in the middle that was, like, really weird and had very little to do with fascism and the Hydra yeah, exactly. stuff. Exactly. Like, this was a framing device for just kind of a standard story adventure event comic where they had to track down things and the bad guys got them and then they fought the big bad guy at the end who was Iron Man because it was Civil War Three. It was. It was about chasing MacGuffins, and I think th that's really what comes down to why I think S uh, Civil Empire, Secret Empire kind of fills what it's trying to do because it is a story about fascism that does not address how fascism happens, kind of addresses the effects of fascism but not really it's just saying here it is it happened that's it we're not going to cover like how the minds work we're not going to do like some interesting concepts that nick spencer had earlier in his captain america run with like how uh youths can be convinced of it it was just it's here it happened but due to the blowback of the initial uh hail hydra thing i feel like and the way marvel and him have talked about it they just had to backpedal like hell to where we just got this weird typical superhero go around the world adventure story where the story that said, hey, don't worry, Hydra Cap isn't the real Steve at the end, still is the real Steve, but isn't, but maybe, but kind of. Yeah. It's, it's The things they've said about the story have changed many, many times. Like, initially they said, oh, it's not based on real world politics, but a tweet Nick Spencer put out recently at the end is like, no, this story is about how fascism has corrupted an American icon reflecting the landscape we live in. And it's just like, make up your gosh darn minds. Yeah, like, they can't... They, they can't, they're trying to commit, but they're trying to commit to the wrong things. It reminds me of, like, you ever see a movie, and you could totally tell that part, like, there was an original script, and then there were all these other things that got forced into the movie. Like, this is how I felt watching the Civil War movie, where mm -hmm. I could tell it was supposed to be, you know, about the Winter Soldier, and the Winter Soldier program, and Captain America, yeah. and, and, you know, and the other Civil five War. soldiers that were going to fight at the end. And then... Disney was like, you actually have to make the Civil War instead of Captain America 3. You need to make Avengers 3. And yeah, that so, was how I felt about Ant-Man too. Yeah, exactly. Where there was like, you could tell the Edgar Wright parts, and then you could tell the mm -hmm. Disney parts in Ant-Man. Yeah. And that's what this book felt like. You could tell the parts that were originally there, and it was supposed to be about 
fascism and Hydra, and then you can tell, like, but also, we gotta do this issue with Hank Pym Ultron, which was the best part of this entire book. It was, I love that part. Uh, but, like, yeah, you can just feel these parts that are like, hey, we need to not do this, and here's, give me a scene that takes up all this space that you now no longer have. Like, the, the Black Widow storyline, where she was gonna <laughs> kill Captain America, was pretty compelling, and then she just died, and it was over. Yeah. And another thing that this issue does is, uh, the whole time... Marvel and uh, Nick Spencer have been like, uh, hey, don't worry, uh, Hydra's not Nazis. And this issue says again that, no, 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 they're Nazis, don't worry. They are Nazis. There's that scene where he's fighting him, he's like, no, I know what you are. I've been fighting you my whole life. Which is a cool line, but it's also like one of the entire premises that Spencer and them have been like clinging to is they're not Nazis. And now it's like, no, no, they're Nazis. See, we got you. We, get, we, we tricked you. Yeah, and they shouldn't have tried to. Like, like I remember really you and I had this similar reaction when they first announced it. This is real. This is not a made-up story. Blah 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 blah. And we were like, of course it's it a made-up story. It has to be the second right. issue. Like, you know, the the issue right, Captain America number one, the big hail Hydra, right? Mm-hmm. Super controversial. Basically, oh, overshadowed the fact that Batman found the Watchmen pin. That's how big of a deal it, it was. Did. that Captain America said hail Hydra? Those happened on the same day and. Captain mm-hmm. America 1 was a bigger deal than Rebirth number 1. Yeah. So, so the second issue of Captain America was Kobik telling us, hey, I snapped reality out of place and this is a parallel reality. Right. Immediately they told us that and then they were like, but it's never going to go back. And we were like, do you think that, you know, my response was, do you think this is my first comic? Because it feels like you do and it's a little belittling, I got to say. Yeah. Well, if I'm remembering correctly, I think... What initially happened is it wasn't even the alternate universe. It was that the first thing Kobeck did was uh, change Cap's memories. It took until Secret Empire to when they actually changed the reality, but initially it was just they were tricking him into remembering the way things happened. All right. Sure. Still. It's, you know, and then they were like, it's an alternate universe. So hard to but track. no, at, at first, like, until Secret Empire, it was just this was Steve, but his memories were all fucked up. Yeah, it was... So that anyway, was when it was still it was. technically the same Steve, but then they retconned it, and uh... what is going? Oh, sorry about that. We lost audio for a second, so go back and say what you just said. It it yeah. is fixed now. Uh, no, I was talking about uh, there have been rumors that uh, Spencer's going to take over Spider-Man from Dan Slott, but we all know Dan Slott will only let Spider-Man leave his cold, dead hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I remember the uh, one of my favorite stories of Dan Slott actually had to do with Civil War II. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was a, a, a writer from, like, Vanity Fair or something, or Gen- yeah. CQ, who got to go to one of the big, infamous Marvel summits where they come up with the upcoming storyline for Marvel. And 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 he said that he sort of saw the pitch for Civil War Two, and yeah. how you know there was a character was going to die, which we now know is Rhodey, right? Uh, Who Tanahisi Coates himself uh, has gone on record as he told Marvel he was like, "You guys know this is a bad idea, right?" And they're like, "No, it's gonna be fine." He was like, "Guys, this is a bad idea." And then when it happened, they were like, "Oh God, this was a bad idea." Yeah, yeah, it was it was a bad idea. So but Tanahisi Coates tells you something. Ugh. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Like it, he's he's definitely if if there's one expert on the depiction of black characters in media who also reads comics, it's Tony Hasekos. Yeah, Coates. yeah like, like after like, uh, sorry, Dwayne after McDuffie Dwayne McDuffie died, McDuffie, so now it's Tony Hasekos. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so already died, and originally it was going to be Spider Man, mm-hmm. or maybe Spider Man was going to have killed him, even though. It was Thanos, not, you know, anybody Thanos else. Thanos, man. Um, and so Dan Slott turned to the reporter and was like, this isn't my first rodeo. Give me 20 minutes. It won't be Spider-Man. And and we now know, reading Civil War II, Spider-Man was barely part of that story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they made, they made Miles a much bigger part of the story with the big prophecy of him killing Captain America. Everyone's favorite new human. Man. 
Don't you love Ulysses Scott? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go off on Civil War Two because I'm already we're already going off on Secret Empire. Yeah. Speaking and Secret Empire has its own uh inhuman who actually mattered more than you thought he would and was very charming. I love Barf. Barf is great. Wait, who? Barf! The Secret Empire the uh the inhuman who could like create any uh who oh, can create yeah. anything that Barf he up. made like a fragment of the cosmic cube, right? Yeah. He was really important, yeah. Yeah, that, that by the way, Barb. is a really big deal and should be addressed. Yeah. It, it don't worry be. about the Cosmic Cube. Don't, don't worry about the Cosmic Cube. That, that, sorry, all about the Cosmic Cube. Don't worry about the Cosmic Cube. Cosmic Cube. Guys, it's not the Cosmic Cube. Don't, it, it's not just the Cosmic Cube. It's the Cosmic Cube. Literally, it's the, cosmic cube. the sentient Cosmic Cube was all of it. Yep. All right, so Secret Empire is over. Captain America talked to evil Captain America, and they were both like, I'm better than you. And, uh, you know, the art in this issue was like, Andrea Sorrentino, I think, is really good, but at the same time, there are times when you actually do want a thick line, and he won't draw like, yeah. a single thick line. Some pages were beautiful, but some were just like hard to figure out. Mm-hmm. Like the in the beginning when Cap was breaking into the prison, there's this scene where it's like it's like this overhead view and you see him like doing a bunch of stuff and I just couldn't figure out what exactly he was doing because I yeah. couldn't quite decipher the foreground from the background. Whereas like later when there was like the there was the sort of the the the, the diagonal spread that showed yeah. uh, like the Cap the Hydra history and all the silhouettes mm-hmm. and it was all in a white background I could really tell what that was. It was beautiful. It was a little bit t- too artsy for, like, as heavy as the dialogue was. Like, it was talking about a lot. There was, there was too much going on for that kind of art to really, like, capture. Yeah, it was properly. kind of a disjointed comic. So, so anyway, Secret Empire is finally over, kind of. Is is Legacy next week, or do we have two weeks until Legacy? Oh, shit. Is, is, is Legacy next week? Uh, I, hmm, I don't well, know. It we might will definitely be. talk about Legacy when Legacy happens, because... It's going to break the internet, Scott. The last page is going to break the internet. That's, we gotta stop using that expression. It's literally never happened. But if it's Star Wars, it will be. If that last page is like uh, Captain America finding Darth Vader's mask, it will break the internet. Yeah, no, you're not wrong about that. It'll yeah. also break Marvel. It will. I really, I really think you're right. I think it's gonna be the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Like well, the, well, it's I... called Legacy. It is. But part of the thing is, like, they're already kind of announcing that. Like, they showed up a bit in uh, Captain Marvel Generations. Uh, we have Marvel 2 and 1, which is going to be written by Chip Zdarsky, and that's about Thing and uh, Johnny. Because I feel like there's already enough seeds they're laying. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably a Fantastic Four. There's a bunch of reasons. I mean, hell, even in yeah. this, even in the Secret Empire issue, there was a shot that uh, it was it was of the Hydra reality, but it showed the Fantastic Four with Doom as later, but had Sue in there, which you mm-hmm. know, we'll take. One and now we know original Jean Grey Gray's coming back again too. Like they're already announcing everyone yeah, is coming I, back to life. I think there's going to be a point where Marvel just stops putting out comic books and they just tell their story in press releases. <laughs> I think that's where we're headed right now. You're not wrong. Like, that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, like, that's, you know, Death of Wolverine. Like, oh, I saved myself four issues because you told me Because you told me what happened. How did Resurrection of Jean Grey. Mm. Yeah, okay, Jean's going to come back. I could, I could jump forward now. Which, did anyone re- really... I mean, no, I, I love Jean, but that's the thing. We have a Jean, so you can kind of have it two ways. You can have her alive and you can have her dead. And now we're just going to have another character who has two versions of himself? Of course we are. It's the X-Men. I'm... It is, but like, yeah, yeah. yeah one so of, weird. How many, how many versions of Nate Gray are there, Reed? How many cables? Okay, how many versions you... of them matter? How many versions of them are around right now? <laughs> one, two well, actually stripes around right now. It's great. Well, then you know what that means? Is we need to bring X Man back. We do. We need to bring that boy back. I'm really curious how like Jean Gray is going to react to the whole Scott being dead thing, and especially how she'd react to like. It all being due to Emma spoilers for IVX, because I feel like that should come up. That should almost be like what the event is. Yeah, I think it should I think her that, be reacting to everything with Scott and Phoenix. I honestly expect the death of Scott to be what makes the Phoenix bring Gene back. Mm-hmm. Because you know, like the Scott in the Phoenix, not just Gene, but the Phoenix is tied to Scott in Dark Phoenix. Right. It was the tie to Scott Summers that broke her from. 
that actually made her become Dark Phoenix when yeah. she saw Scott die in Mesmer or in Mastermind's weird Victorian fantasy. That's what made her snap. And so now I think the real death of Scott is going to make the Phoenix snap again. Yeah, and and then again, if she finds out this was all Emma or everything that Emma did, so it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking great. It's gonna be so great. Death of Emma. Now Emma Man. gets to die. They should bring Frank quietly back to dry it. They should. What has that dude done lately? Anyway, we're, we're, we're tangenting. Oh, he's been doing Jupiter's Legacy with Mark Miller. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't, he's doing that book? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, apparently it's pretty good. I didn't mean to check it out, but, you know. Yeah. Mark Miller. I don't rush. <laughs> Miller anymore. World coming to Netflix. Netflix. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on from Secret Empire. What should we I, talk about? Uh, I think we should talk about Action Comics. Let's talk about Action Comics. Spoiler warning, right back up, or just leave yeah, it up. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna leave that up, it's a good point. It's gonna stay up there. So yeah, Action Comics, so it was, I, I checked, it was three years ago that Jeff Johns introduced oh, wow. Mr. Oz. It's been a long time. A long build. So Mr. Oz has been watching Superman, and mm -hmm. he's been capturing... Uh, Various, various characters. characters. Yeah, most of them have been kind of Superman-y, like Doomsday. Yeah, but so two Tim took, Drakes. Took Tim Drake from Detective Comics and took Tim Drake from Batman Beyond. Although with Batman Beyond, I think that's more of a Dan Jurgens connection than a Tim Drake connection. But Dan Jurgens is the one writing uh, action comics in this whole story. That's what I'm saying. That because Dan Jurgens has taken Oz, maybe he was just like, hey, I can use this other book I'm writing. Why not? Yeah. You know, I think that if he wasn't writing Beyond, he might not have been taking Tim's. But I could be wrong because yeah. I have no idea what Oz's plan is. So, yeah. so he's been capturing people, he's been watching Superman, and in this issue, we finally get the big reveal. You know, it's been, you know, finally figure out Oz's identity. And on the last page of this issue, you do. And because of that, there's basically 20 pages of bullshit before that. Here's the thing, though. Actually, I want to talk about that bullshit for a little bit. That, uh, as they do, but if you notice, there's actually been a kind of a is there is right wing controversy about this issue because yes, a lot has. of it is Superman protecting uh, undocumented workers because people don't know that one of Superman's taglines is champion of the oppressed. Yes. And like it's, it's literally one of his things. It's also just like a few panels like in mm. this. So in this issue, Mr. Oz, he had decided he's going to prove to Superman that humanity is not worthy of his protection, mm -hmm. which that is the, big clue to Mr. Oz's identity because it's the same plot every fucking Kryptonian villain ever fucking has when they come to Earth. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, it is. So anyway, uh... And many other <laughs> So all these people start... He, he Somehow, Oz is powerful enough to influence these people to be shitty. They'll start attacking each other and stealing yeah. shit. Blah, blah, blah. There's one of the bad guys who's literally clubbing baby seals. Yeah. Um, one of them poaches a rhino. He takes the horn off of a rhino. It's pretty dark. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, and one of them is some, some people fire at undocumented immigrants, and Superman stops them from getting shot. Mm -hmm. Which is and should not be controversial when Superman stops anybody from getting shot. The Batman saves the Joker on a regular basis because they don't let yes. people die. It's not even mm -hmm. a political thing. It's just a hero thing. Yeah. And then, but like you said, he's also the champion of the press. He is right. an undocumented immigrant. Yeah, also that Superman Superman's story is, is an immigrant alien. story. Yeah. And that's, and that's part of, I think, what's great about Superman is he is, he is an immigrant. He just came to this place and was like, I can help make it better, so I do. I love Superman. Anyway. Superman's real great. So, but the, I, I, yeah. So this is, uh, so that, yeah, there was right right controversy. They were like, hey, Superman is political. And Dan Jurgens got on Twitter and was like, guys, Superman is just being Superman. Read, yeah. read some Superman. And also, Superman is inherently a political character because art is inherently political. But anyway. That's true. That's, uh, besides those yeah. 20 pages that did or didn't really matter. Well, the first five were actually about Mr. Yeah. Oz. Mm -hmm. And he was talking to Metallo. And he was like, he just showed up at Metallo's cell in Argus because he's, uh, I have no idea why he's so powerful because usually Kryptonians, okay, obviously he's a Kryptonian. Kryptonians yeah. aren't this powerful. Like, uh, yeah, Superman's strong, but he's like strong and fast and lasers. But like, there's a set mm -hmm. of things you get under a yellow sun. 
Yeah. Unless see, this is the big twist. He's Silver Age Oz. He's got yeah, Silver I, Age powers. Yeah. No, th- I I think that's gonna be part because we, we should just build up to the reveal, Scott. Okay. So at the end, the he ta- he goes to Superman. He's like, "Hey, you piece of shit. They are not worthy of you." And he takes off his hood and he's Jor El, Superman's dad. My son. yeah. Which raises a lot of questions. Lots of questions. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. He talks to Metallo and takes the green kryptonite heart out of Metallo. Yeah, Metallo dies, by the way. Metallo's dead. He's going to be dead. Ceremoniously dead of one of the most iconic Superman characters that nobody really remembers. Like, He'll be he'll be bad. Remember when Reverse Flash died and was literally back in Flash like two issues later? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. I mean, characters die. We, we might be seeing the death of John Corbin on Supergirl. We saw two Metallos, and one of them was uh, Asian. Okay. And I wonder if I wonder if they're sort of going to follow that trend. We might because we're definitely going to get another Metallo. Somebody's going to put some kryptonite in somebody else's chest. That's going to happen. As they do. And I think yeah. maybe now it's they're going to try to diversify with Metallo, so that way we have an iconic villain that's not another white dude. Mm-hmm. So that might be happening. But anyway. Jor El just grabs some green kryptonite, which we know is not usually chill for yep, it's non kosher for uh, for Kryptonians. So that's mm-hmm. first question. Second one is how did he survive? Yeah, which yeah they they've said uh, yeah we're not really, we've seen the covers of the next issues and it's straight up like they're going to be addressing what happened with uh, special guest stars. They're going to be like talking about all right this is what happened this is the flash this this is the flashback going to be kind of explaining it, going to have Superman, yeah. like, one of the covers, it's Superman looking at the planet, horrified at it's blowing up, doing the typical no pose. Classic. Awesome. Classic. Um, yeah, and so, it's, we'll see what happens. This also, though, isn't straight out of nowhere. Yeah. There have been, mostly in backups at different Superman comics over the past few years, we've seen sort of a retelling of the for, of the death of Krypton. Mm-hmm. And it's been really vague, and one of the things that it said was that a third, there was Kara, and there was Kal-El, and a third rocket also fired from Krypton, which we can now assume okay. is this jor El's pod. Right. So it's not straight out of nowhere. And it also kind of makes a lot more sense, like, who was one of the big people kidnapped by uh, Mr. Oz, Mixie's Pitlick? Yes. I forgot about that, that Mixie Spitlick was involved with the Mr. Oz thing mm-hmm. and vice versa when, with Superman Reborn. Yeah. And now it also raises the question of one of the most important missing characters still, uh, Superboy, wouldn't be super surprising if uh, he, if like Jor-El saw a Kryptonian or what he saw as a fake Kryptonian and was like, hey, I don't like this dude, going to keep him because that could be something interesting that he, he's a clone. He's half human. He wouldn't like clone John actually. Yeah, half human. Yeah, there, yeah. There, it makes sense. And and, and so it's, it's surprising and also not. Yeah, it's it's surprising and not. Usually, I I'm, honestly I like I don't like Jor El as an active character. I like him as a character that yeah. was not is. So I mm-hmm. was I was really underwhelmed by the reveal. I was like, oh, I was hoping I was gonna care about the villain like as Jor El, but right. it just occurred to me, and this is an interesting angle. Superman Reborn happened, and two Superman combined. So, oh God! What does Mister Oz know about the history of Superman, Superman Red, yeah. and Blue, and and the, the different continuities? Because mm-hmm. I think I think that we're all gearing towards uh, the DC universe is going to learn about their past continuities. I think that's a big yeah. part of the End of Dark Side War. I think that's what the Three Jokers is. I think that's part mm-hmm. of Doomsday Clock and Doctor Manhattan's perspective of time is going to be right. about reboots. And, you know, Jeff Johns is all about justifying these things narratively. He loves yeah, doing Yeah, like, that. that's literally his thing. It's saying, hey, this thing that happened, it happened. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and these things that shouldn't have happened, here's why they happened. And here's why it happened right. differently. And, and here's why Hal Jordan's not a villain anymore. Yeah. Space bug. Jeff Johns loves him some Hal Jordan. He, he's a Silver Age dude. Yeah, he is. And that's, and, you know... It's it's gonna be interesting to see him do Watchmen because he usually doesn't yeah. tackle, uh, you know, he doesn't revamp a character that dark. Right. So yeah, it'll be Doomsday Clock is gonna be off the chain. Doomsday Clock is gonna be bonkers, bananas. It's be the craziest comic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be craziest comic in which we have metal, which we're talking about later. Yeah, yeah. Much we're we're saving metal to the end of the podcast or the show or whatever you want to call this stream, mostly because. We, we're gonna it's gonna be insane we have a lot to say so jor we will definitely keep you posted on 
the happenings with Jor-El, because I'm probably going to want to rant and rave about them, because I have strong feelings about Superman. Yeah, you do. Good so, feelings. So, okay. That's that. Let's talk about an issue that we both read. I was... And we read it because of the name. Yeah! This is a new I... image comic by Matt Nixon, who's only done, like, a couple fill-in issues before. So it seems like a pretty mm -hmm. big break for him. Uh, this, that is Retcon number one. Yes. Which is a book that, just kind of cut to the chase, is not about retcons and does not yet seem to be about retcons. And this is something that we both checked out because I was like, hey, interesting name. And yeah. its style is very visually appealing. Um, it, 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 it's a very Sean Gordon Murphy-esque book. It has uh, interesting designs and has some really cool monsters. But the book itself has a story that's not not standout, but just I'm not exactly sure what's going on and not in the most compelling way. Like, this is kind of a book that I'm reading because I want to know what the title's about. Yeah, it's like the story isn't uninteresting, but it's not necessarily mm -hmm. compelling. The yeah. idea is our, our main character clearly works for the CIA or some clandestine similar or yeah. organization, and he is he's watching a former member who is at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, and they're and yeah. he's basically watching to see if this guy is going to leak classified information. Yeah, and he's a war vet, so like he, he's being kind of sympathetic. He's like, hey, it's just this old man. He, he's not really uh, doing anything to harm. And it turns out his partner is, what do they call him? Uh, the skin, skin puppet? Walker skin walker? Or something. Yeah. Yeah. He, his partner, and what's kind of like a, a cool power is his partner can uh, basically inhabit and control like any any human so his partner's also there his partner's also watching yeah it's possession he sits at a chair back at their headquarters and like dead mm -hmm. man's into people basically yeah um so so yeah and so this guy inevitably does leak some information and things go poorly and we learn sort of about the organization they're from they clearly deal with supernatural stuff this is a comic of course so there's like genies mm -hmm. and ghosts and and our main character has some sort of firepower it seems uh, and then this dude turns into a werebear yeah he turns into a werebear and which is not cool. necessarily how like i love the design it's like this bear tearing out of his mouth it's yeah, like, like the bear like wearing like his skin rips open the guy and is like i'm a bear it's awesome yeah it was really cool it was a cool design that's in, this book is very stylish yeah. but then yeah basically the rest of what happens is he he fights the bear his partner tries to take him down with some nanites courtesy of ray palmer and like uh <laughs> they get into a fight back and that was my immediate thought when i saw that i did the whole line that's in my hilarious. head hilarious it's a dank meme that's but, that is that is one of the dankest <laughs> memes one of the dankest memes the and basically like he, yeah they fight then we turn out our main character is possessed by literally a mary sue spelled m-e-r-r-y mary sue who's like this other kind of personality in his yeah. head that in this issue gives him iron skin and giant uh popeye arms kind of like the hulk who can apparently do anything yeah kind of like the hulk but he says like it's specifically it's not triggered by rage or anger like he's yeah, still there like watching protection. it's kind of like if anybody if you read any valiant comics uh there's a character from harbinger called torque that basically just creates I remember a stronger torque. version of himself around himself so yeah. it's kind of like that um mm -hmm. The art style, you're right. It's, it's really, it's really interesting. The colors, I think, also really sell it. Like, yeah. Shadow Gordon Murphy, the sketchy style is neat, but I mm -hmm. don't think it would work as well without the colors. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the script isn't necessarily compelling, but the mm -hmm. art is. And, yeah. And, and like you said, and, I'm, I'm really curious about the name Retcon because all this spy shit going on suggests mm -hmm. it could explode into something really interesting. Yeah. And it's just, I think the only thing holding back is that, yeah, there's not a hook in this issue yet, yeah, which is kind of what the point of a number one usually is. Yeah, yeah, I'm not grabbed by anything. I'm curious, but I'm mm -hmm. not grabbed. Um, yeah. There's a book uh, that I want to recommend if you like this art called Butcher Baker, the Righteous Maker. It's another image comic, and it oh, is – this one. It's about, like, a retired superhero called Butcher Baker, the Righteous Maker, and he's this big all-American guy. Kind of reminds me of the comedian from Watchmen. Okay. And so basically he's already put all of the supervillains in this super prison and they all break out in the beginning. And so okay. President Jay Leno and Vice President Dick Cheney come to him and ask him to round up these supervillains. I and, like I like Jay Leno as president. And, and the begin like and the, the art is very similar to this, the colors are similar to this. Uh, and he's it's very it's very R rated. He's like having like an orgy with like three women and Jay Leno, Jay Leno and Dick Cheney just like walk in and talk to him. His his door handle is like an actual penis that you have to pull. 
is, <laughs> is ridiculous. Uh, but hmm. it's just like this really fun book that got they got canceled, so they had to wrap it up real quick. But the villain is okay. really interesting in it. Who did it? Um, Joe Casey uh, and Mike seen? Huddleston. Okay, I like so, Joe, yeah, Casey. So Joe Casey. I, I know about Mike him. Huddleston um, brings the sketchy art and the colors that are really cool. Right. Um, Butcher Baker, the Righteous Maker, Image Comics. Mm. Um, so we'll, we will see how that? Retcon goes. Hopefully. Yeah. I honestly I'm might interested. forget about it by next month, though. Yeah. Like, I, I'll comics. probably catch up with it. Maybe I'll tell you if it's worth talking about. Yes. All right. That's all for Retcon. Yeah, should so I think maybe we should uh, go back to the super family of characters because uh, you had another yes. book. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk about this sort of follow up from what I talked about two weeks ago with uh, Supergirl mm -hmm. finished up its big Fatal Five storyline um, that sort of was teasing the Legion of Superheroes because you know mm -hmm. the well, I five. expect when they bring back the Legion of Superheroes, it's going to be Supergirl and the Legion of Superheroes again. It's been that yeah. way for a long time, mm -hmm. um, and you know she's great with them. Yeah, it's great with Brainy. Maybe She's, bring John in. That'd be cool having another Superboy. That would be the, fun we, having an arc with John going to the future, um, mm -hmm. meeting his dad's old friends if they want to like, yeah. sort of include the fact that young Superman did that. Uh, which at this point, it's really unclear whether or not young Superman did anything with the Legion. But I guess I'd probably not. not. Yeah, yeah I that's think so. Yeah, because we haven't seen. Any which again, it'd be which Legion is this gonna be? If yeah, that, that, who are the Legion? We're gonna find out. Um, <laughs> And, you know, we even got that weird evil version of the Legion in Just League 2001. That's not going to matter. We know that's not going to matter. It's not. I'm, only only Giff Matt's going to care about that's, that. That's true. But Giffen is one of the key Legion guys. He's like. He is. He's, he's, he's the second name in the Legion of Superheroes after Paul Levitz. Like, yeah, those that's are the true. two biggest names when it comes to Legion. So, that I mean, that obviously true. might be why we haven't gotten Legion, is that Giffen had this weird idea about 3000. And yeah. And we have to walk that back still. Mm hmm. Um, which they're doing slowly. So anyway, we have this thing. So have this Fatal Five. They're attacking Supergirl. She's defending them. They also sort of framed Supergirl, made her look like a villain. She, her yeah. dad went all evil. Her dad became Cyborg Superman for a while in the New 52. Yeah, did. And so he was, she took him down, kept him in stasis at the DEO, where she works. Mm -hmm. So in the DEO, the, the Fatal Five broke out Val Zod, Cyborg Superman, Supergirl's mm -hmm. dad, and was like, look, she was harboring a fugitive, and then Indigo, who is like Brainiac 3 or something. Wait, um, wait, wait Val Zod? Don't you mean Jor-El, or is it Chain? Oh, sorry, or it sorry, I do, mean, I do mean Zor-El, not okay, Val Zod. Thank I thought you. so. Thank you. Um, so, Zor-El was stopped. Indigo was pretending to be a big hero at sort of taking Supergirl's place. The Cat Grant is very disillusioned with Supergirl. And so Supergirl's like, fuck this, I'm kicking some ass. And she, she realizes that what's keeping Emerald Empress here is not her own power, but is the power of the Emerald Eye of Ekron. So, right. just like, it, I'm going to go ahead and throw the spoiler tag up here, um, which is not even like a huge spoiler of Supergirl, but it's a pretty big deal if you're a Legion fan. And you can, and you know, yeah. also, after 52, the Emerald Eye of Ekron has like another sort of status with the whole yeah. thing that Lobo did. And we actually met Ekron, which is awesome. Read 52. It was a giant, yeah. <laughs> When we found out what Ekron was. Yeah, yeah, and Ekron was mad. So in Supergirl, just like on the cover there, uh, she just ripped that eye right the fuck in half. Yeah, just she destroyed it. She very powerful tore artifact. It too. Just, nope, you're not a thing anymore. And Emerald Empress went back to wherever the hell she came from, which may or may not be the year 3000. Probably. Who knows? No idea. No idea. So that was cool. Remember when she was on the original Suicide Squad? Yes, I do. Remember the original Suicide Squad, which was fucking her, Dr. Polaris, Lobo, Maxwell Johnny Sorrow. Bird. That event was bonkers. That I'm event digressing. was bonkers. I love, I love that DC is like, events don't have to be super fucking serious. Yeah. We can have Johnny Sorrow and Maxwell Lord on the original Suicide Squad. Right. We can have, we can have metal, which we will, we'll, again, we will get to. Um, so. That would be so good. Another big thing that happened here, which is interesting, there's been this this character, this this witchy woman. I wish I remembered her name, but she's, you know, the replacement yeah. of, of Mano. She's clearly a witch of some sort. She's a new character for Supergirl. She knocked out Magog, stole his helmet, and just vanished. Yeah. Which I'm really curious about. I think that's going to be our next, you know, that seems to be the big villain that Steve Orlando might be creating for Supergirl. Yeah. Um, also, I've never given a shit about Magog, and I might if it's somebody who stole Magog's helmet and is posed like, 
I, if this woman goes by Magog, I will find her more interesting than I've ever found Magog outside of Kingdom Come. Remember when Magog was Dawnbreaker for two issues in Superman and Wonder Woman? That was a weird... That was a bit, because it's like, oh, he's... Story nope, now it's Magog. This, like, this oh, is, is Magog this going to be here. interesting? No. No, it's nope, not, it's just, because it's, it's going to be fucking Magog. Magog. I don't like Magog. And I love Magog Kira was okay in uh, uh, Generation Lost. I, I kind of liked him there. Oh yeah, that book. That book was also bonkers. Yeah, that book was also insane. That book was insane. That was a brightest day tie-in about the Justice League International. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Good, good by Judd Winnick. It was Judd Winnick when he wasn't trying to be as dark as he can humanly go. Yeah. So, so that's Supergirl. It was fun. The only other thing is that the DEO has been shaken up. Basically, things are kind of being put back. At the beginning of this run, it was very much like the TV show. Supergirl mm -hmm. worked at the DEO. Cameron Chase was in charge. That's not like the TV show, but Cameron Chase kind of filled the role of Alex Danvers. Um, mm -hmm. So Cameron's out of the DEO. Uh, Kara's foster parents are out of the DEO. Mm -hmm. And so is Supergirl. And now, Director Bones, Mr. Bones is back as Director Bones! Bones. Who's just got a skull for a face and he smokes cigars? And if you don't think that's cool, come on, they're comics. His power is translucent skin. That's it. I love it. And he's yeah. a black skull for some reason. Yeah, he's. I so can't Director wait Bones to be back, back on Mr. Bones. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to be back on Mr. Bones's wild ride. <laughs> doot doot. That is all doot, I have to doot. say about Mr. Bones. So many dudes. Okay, so that'll do for Supergirl today. Yeah. So uh, I guess we can sort of keep it in DC for now and talk about uh, The Flash this week, which did a uh, classic classic tradition of any Flash Rider, which is if you're a Flash Rider, you got to introduce some new rogues. So this week we got the introduction of Bloodwork. Bloodwork, which is like such a 90s name. The 90s name, but I really like the way he was done. Yeah, and like, I was not, not, not expecting to enjoy... I was like, who the fuck is this? Blood. What is going on? And I enjoyed it so much more than I thought I would. He reminded me a lot of Comics Hunter Zolomon in terms of, like, he's a really, he's someone who's with the police department. He wants to help. Hunter Zolomon, he was originally he was a criminologist. He was studying. And here we have this guy. Well, yeah, yeah he, he does well. blood work. He wants to help out the department. He's trying to figure everything out. But eventually he's like, you know, no, it's going to be easier for me to me to do it this way. And there's a great scene in it where he's like, wait, I have a name. And, and Barry just goes, no, please, 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 not that. That's that's too obvious. And at the end, we get the get reveal of blood work. Get reveal of blood work. So, yeah, this was good. I, I'm getting a little tired of the negative speed force Barry. Already. See, I'm, I'm liking it the more I see it. And it's just... It's just I think that I don't like Barry being – it's like it's less about the Flash and more about Barry being mm -hmm. that way. That like it's part of what I like about Barry is that he's not that guy. And also, again, like they've – I've so I've been reading Flash constantly since New 52 began. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing this, is Barry actually good? Can he actually be around Iris or Patty or whoever? Pretty consistently for like six years now. Yeah. And so I kind of just want to move past it. The another, oh, Flash is – speed is fucked up and maybe he shouldn't run it's like the same thing is going on with Wally right now or was until mm -hmm. today so I'm not crazy about that but like I'm still really liking this arc yeah and I, I do appreciate that it wasn't just an arc it happened and now we're mm -hmm. doing another arc with him dealing with the negative speed force yeah it's a status quo I, I, I like just simply that his powers are different like last issue we saw he's in the bath because he doesn't have a healing factor like, he just has to physically recover from all this damage and beatings he's taking. Yeah, and, and that's, like, that's like, I like the Flash aspect of the new powers mm -hmm. more than I like the Barry aspect of the new powers. And I think for us, at least for me, it might be part of because last season of The Flash was also all about Sad Barry and Sad Flash. That's also so probably part of We also had so it. much of that on TV. Yeah, yeah, we got, we've gotten a lot of that, and I'm just like, come on. The Flash. It's like all yeah. the Flash is always reliably like this kind of fun comic mm -hmm. for me. That's fun and like, It doesn't try to get up its own ass too much. Yeah. But at the same time, I I don't want to be one of those guys that's like a writer shouldn't try more with the Flash, you know? Right. Because uh, writers should yeah. try things. And anyone who tries to make Barry separate from Wally, I like that. And it's, even even if that's by making him sad, it's like hey. You're doing work. You're developing him. And uh, Josh Williamson has been doing a really good job in just making Barry feel distinct, especially now that yeah. we have Wally, and he really has to be separate from Wally. 
Yeah, yeah. I will say, I'm at a point also in this book where every issue I'm like, is Mina gonna come back? I want fucking Mina to come back. Like, I <laughs> yeah, thought that, also, that Black Hole art got... was so good, and I just want more of it, and I'm so curious about her, and she broke yeah, my what's heart. what's doing? Yeah, we yeah. got that teaser of her, and now it's like, alright, where are you? When are you coming back, yo? What is she, what is she doing? Yeah, I really, and I, and I think Mina particularly, like, Outside of Godspeed, who even was okay, I really like the new rogues and the new characters that Williamson has been creating. Yeah. He's been doing, like, I, I really, like, I like her, I like all the other supporting characters at the uh, CCPD, I, I like blood work, uh, I, I love his reverse flash. He, that last reverse flash arc is, like, one of my favorite flash stories, period. Like, I think that's some of the best stuff that's ever been done with Eobard Thon. Wow, Thumb. cool. Because, yeah, it's really like, good. yeah. Just, just, just and not making him just a villain, making this tragic character. But yeah, that that's all I have to say about the Flash, really. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just it was, it was a good arc, and we'll see bl blood work. It's just mm -hmm. blood. It's work. so good. It's blood so work. good. It shouldn't. So nineties. You know, speaking of the nineties, that's actually a good segue. Let's talk about some a, a book that is way more likely to have a character called Blood Work, and that is Ninjack. Yeah, Ninja. Yes, the Val Valiant is all about embracing what was good and ridiculous and aggressive about the yeah. 90s. The last issue of Ninja Act before it just becomes Ninja K. Ninja K. Ninja K. So, and yeah. Uh, yeah, this is written by Matt Kent. It's, uh, yeah, basically the prequel, his last issue before Chris Gage takes over the book in October. And it's just kind of all about uh, establishing Colin King. It's like kind of not really just giving his backstory, but establishing where he's at right now and kind of what motivates him. Uh, this book was also really pretty. I, I liked the framing of all the panels. I like a lot of the way of just literally setting up the story. And it's basically saying like, yeah, Colin King is everything he's been through. I, I love the bits where we're talking about this is old Colin King. Nine-year-old Colin King is still there. Colin King who lost his love is still there. He, the future Colin King who has to stab people by being a cool ninja is still there. That's that's cool. Yeah, I fell I fell off. I, I have a weird relationship with Valiant where yeah. up until like a year ago, I had read everything from their relaunch. To mm -hmm. then, which you know, it's only they only have like eight books going at once, so it's it's actually pretty right. cool that they started in 2012. You can read the entire wide universe, mm -hmm. and it's not too much. Like you can't do that with Marvel or DC because there's 75 yeah. years of it. But with Valiant, mm -hmm. you can. You can just a clean start point in 2012. Um, and so I just kind of got burnt out on it. And I yeah, and that, understandable. And now I'm just like, honestly, they had a big crossover, Divinity Three. And I, I, I want to go back and read that. I was going to wait for it all to be done and then read it all at once, and then I just mm -hmm. still haven't. Yeah. So what's going on I, with Ninjak then? What's going on lately? Um, last I saw him, he was still kind of getting over the fact that that red-headed woman betrayed him. Yeah. And that they all happened to work for the same guy. And Ninjak also had a big event with Shadow Man over the summer, Rapture. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, I know that Tell too. Tell us about that, Scott. Uh, but I don't know what happened in it because I didn't read it. So yeah. So this book doesn't really cover that. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is the first Valiant book I've read like since uh, Divinity Two, and that's because honestly, it it stands alone really well. It like gives you what you need. It sets up what's going to happen by giving the other ninjas A through J. We're going to have Ninja A, Ninja B, Ninja C, Ninja D. Because that's the whole thing about Ninja. Ninjak's not just Ninjak, he's Ninja hyphen K. Yeah, I guess that's, Ninja period K. That's from Matt Kint's run that, that ended with this one. And I remember that I that was reading when that happened, and I was like, uh... Okay, sure. did he come up with that? Or was I, that from the uh, original? I'm pretty certain he came up with that. I think it was okay. just Ninjak, and they, they came up with it. I could be wrong, I haven't read a whole lot of 90s Valiant. I've read very little 90s Valiant, actually. Um... But yeah, I was like, sure, Ninja K. Why? Why the hell not? It's like why when uh, when Grant Morrison was writing X Men, and he was like, Wolverine isn't Weapon X. He's Weapon Ten. Ten. You know, and the Weapon Plus program became this whole thing, and you know, made from Captain America to Phantom X and everything in between. Yeah. To to Nuke. To Nuke. And the Skinless yeah. Man. Nuke was in there. Deadpool. Who's coming I back? Think. The Skinless Man is coming back. Uh, Nuke is. Oh, Nuke. Oh, probably because because he was on TV and he was really compelling. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's gonna be a whole bunch of nukes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's part of I think uh, Greg Pak is doing in Weapon X, which oh, it's, makes it, sense. Is it part of the uh, WMD or is that storyline done? I didn't. 
I fell off Weapon X. Yeah, I, I, th- I think it's part of when that. When it started to cross over. We're getting that track. But yeah, Ninjak, uh, I like this issue a lot. It was it was cool ninja stuff. Uh, Colin King's a compelling character. Uh, Chris Gage is one of my favorite writers who doesn't get talked about a lot because he's a dude who he writes a lot of books. But he's been one of those guys who I'm always like, I, I like this guy. I always like when he gets more work and he gets like slightly higher profile and higher profile. Yeah, and he uh, he did a run on a previous uh, Valiant book called Bloodshot. Yeah, hardcore. When uh, well, it was it was Bloodshot, but it was sort of renamed Bloodshot and the Hardcore. Uh, yeah. For a while, which so the Hardcore are part of the Valiant Comics universe. It is it's H A R D, and then it's Corpse Core. You know, C O R P S. So they're mm-hmm. hardcore, but they're the you know it's an acronym. It's so '90s and it's fucking hilarious. And they have these like implants, so they they have like they get they get powers that are given to them by implants. And Bloodshot was their leader for a while, and it was like this weird arc. Because Christos Gage is a pretty silly writer, like he writes pretty lighthearted yeah. books. And Bloodshot is not that character at all. Right. Um. So, like, it was this hilarious book where like Bloodshot was this serious straight man who was like, I'm all gritty and I don't know if my family is real and I've been turned into a weapon. And then the hardcore, like, we're super soldiers, but there's all this ridiculous stuff happening around it. It's like this, mm. it's like an adult animation cartoon. Yeah. The way Christos Gage writes some of his books, it could be a lot of fun. And I think that it's going to work well for Ninjak because Ninjak is mm-hmm. so that character. He's like, he's like in douchier James Bond, which is yeah, insane. Yeah, that's a good way to He's James Bond. Oh, I, uh, your, your, your voice is getting a little in and out. Something, something weird is happening. Yeah, in Tommy, we have an internet connection problem. Huh. Um, is that the case? That might be Jesus. the case. I'm not getting anything. Uh, we'll hmm. try to power through. Uh, I can still hear you. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. our listeners will not be too bothered by it. And hopefully the internet yeah. will reset itself and get better. I'll play. All right. Is that, that's all we have to say about Ninjak. It's fun. Ninja K is... Yeah, I think so. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Let's talk about something that pretended to be a big deal, but I don't actually think it's going to be. And that is... Of course it's not. Titans. Not Teen yeah. Titans. We're, we'll get to that. Great with Titans. Regular old Titans. This is the book with Dick Grayson and Wally West and Donna and the you know original Titans, older but not the actual original Titans because there's other Titans. Anyway, mm-hmm. the last issue ended with this cliffhanger of Nightwing having been the. We've known that there was like a double agent inside of the Titans, and uh, mm-hmm. it was Nightwing was like, "Oh, it's me." And then at the beginning of this issue, it was like, "Well, he didn't know it was him until right then," and he just was trying to fool with them for like a second. But basically, he was an unwitting spy, and basically, it's exactly like Young Justice. Yep, <laughs> it's straight out of that book. Yeah, I can't like like. Uh, well, it reminded uh, me okay. more of the show than anything else. Like I uh, like. Yeah, so yeah, out of that show, I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's Roy Harper being Broken Arrow. It's exactly all that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't seen Young Justice, by the way, stop what you're doing and watch Young Justice. It's, it's, it's coming back, which is very hard very to believe. Show. Um, so yeah, Young Justice is good, Titans is also good, but it's a little contrived right now. And so anyway, yeah. but that's not the real shit about this issue. It's not about Nightwing. It's about mm. Wally. And in the beginning, Wally is writing a letter to Nightwing, and it's very clearly, uh, apologetic, the, the, right. the letter he is writing. He's mm. like, yeah, I'm sorry, I love being a Titan, and I have to be a Titan, and I have to be the Flash, but actually... Um, you can you can really tell through this issue. He's gonna end the letter with "I quit. I'm not being yeah. the Titans anymore." It's leading up to that very new Teen Titans esque dramatic reveal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very much like like the you know the arc right before um, Judas Contract, where Wally right. quit and then Dick was like, "I can't be Robin anymore. I'm not quitting, but I'm not Robin." Um, it's mm-hmm. very reminiscent of that. Um, which is probably not an accident, given that now it's right after the Lazarus contract, and they're doing a lot of parallels right. with that with that story arc. So, at the end of this issue, though, Wally takes like a bullet or something, and he can't face through it because he's got, you know, like, what is it? He he's, takes he's a bullet by him. momentarily time traveling back. That's right. He sort of time travels to like save Dick, and then he dies because. 
We know that if you save somebody with time travel, somebody has to die. It's always exactly always gotta be a death somewhere. So that happened to Wally, which would have been dramatic if this wasn't a year after they brought him back in Rebirth and like he was the key right. to the whole Doctor Manhattan thing. Like, there's no way mm-hmm. DC char- DC kills this character after five consecutive yeah, no. years of kickback, making them bring him back and make a whole thing about it. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, like, I I feel like we're kind of dancing around the fact that she ultimately, yeah, no, of course he's going to be fine. He's not dead. I think he's being removed from Dan Abnett's storyline so Jeff Johns can use him. I wouldn't really mind that because I I like Dan Abnett's book, but there can only be so much Brett Booth. Like, Brett Booth (laughs) is a dude who, he fucking loves The Flash. He is an amazing fan of them. I love his fandom. I I love his his enthusiasm. But just, it... (laughs) There's so many long legs, and just there have been like some really good variant coverage from this book that just make me wish those people were drawing it. Yeah, no, I agree that I'm getting. Although that won't like that. That's better for Wally, kind of, but it's not better for yeah. Titans. We'll still have Brad Booth. Yeah, and, no, uh, and we will still, still read there. it because there's Dick Grayson involved, and we 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 do love ourselves some Dick. Yeah, we love getting our hands around it. We we love some Dick. I'll take I'll take I'll take blue Dick. I'll take a red Dick. I'll take any Dick I can get. I mean, and it's pretty. <laughs> It's really funny that we were actually thankful for Red Dick. I mean, not because we because we like Secret Dick, but it was still yeah. getting uh, getting yeah. some Red Dick, and now we got different Secret Dick with New yeah. Order. Although I gotta say, I think Grayson is my favorite arc of Dick Grayson. Of like, yeah. uh, like my favorite Nightwing story is Grayson. I think that book was amazing. I like Grayson a lot. Grayson was very good. So anyway, mm-hmm. Titans happened. Yeah, Wall they released dead. or they're releasing it's an album of its Oh, looks like now I'm getting the internet connection problem. And it's You're turning robot, Scott. The street. Um, ignore that. I promise. It's fine. Robot, Scott. Um, we're just going to keep cool. powering through and hope that the broadcast oh, works. Sorry about the internet. I got a new PC recently. Dream because it's coming from my computer. Okay. So let's talk about it. Metal. That's me shouting at the people who could out hear me. Let us talk Mostly about, myself. Let us talk about this book. This book is metal. This book is amazing. We have one more book. We've got one more book. Okay. Let's read now. Take it a f- no, we have Mr. Miracle still. Um, yeah, but I want to get out of here. Let's talk about Mr. Miracle next week. Okay. This is not working, so I think I'm going to shut down the show. Metal will keep. We might be on later today. We might be on tomorrow. If you want to check back on the YouTube, we might do a special episode just for us to talk about Metal and Mr. Miracle because we're very excited about them. But unfortunately, this is going to have to be all for us. Thank you guys for sticking around. Hope you had a good time, even though we had to cut off uh, a little bit early. So uh, that's going to that's gonna do for us. I'm Scott Shugan. That there is Reed Strong. I know he's frozen, but he's, he's got some strong reads. Next week we'll be back with our good friend Aaron Schramm. She will...